Top Glove Corp is pinning its hopes for an improvement in its bottom line for the final quarter of FY 2023 on a further uptrend in average selling prices and lower raw material costs as it reported its fourth straight quarterly loss. Nonetheless, the group expects to remain in the red for the fourth quarter of 2023. Speaking at a virtual press conference, MD Lim Chong Guan said the immediate focus for the glove maker is to target positive earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortisation. He explains that a bit of positive means utilisation rates can increase to 50% in the second half and is hoping the ASP price can see an upward adjustment of between 3 and 5%. The group's current utilisation rates for its production facilities are in the 30% range, while its gloves ASP stood at 22 US dollars per 1,000 pieces as at May 31st, 2023. Another tailwind, according to the world's largest glove maker, is replenishment activity, which is expected to commence as its customers' glove inventory is close to depletion, spurring an uptick in global demand in the second half of 2023. Top Glove saw its net loss for the third quarter narrow to 130.6 million from the 164.7 million it posted in the second quarter, driven by those improved ASPs and its ongoing cost optimization measures. Revenue for the quarter dropped 14.1% quarter on quarter to 530.6 million from 618 million ringgit. The group's performance was comparably weaker on a year-on-year basis, where it posted a net profit of 15.3 million in the third quarter of FY 2022. Revenue also declined 65% year-on-year from 1.49 billion ringgit. In a statement, the group attributed the improved quarterly performance to an increase in glove ASPs of 6%, coupled with cost optimization initiatives to streamline operations. The measures employed include decommissioning obsolete production lines and temporarily stopping production at 17 out of its 49 factories in light of the softer global glove demand which the industry continues to contend with. Executive Director Ng Yong Ling also revealed that Top Glove laid off about 600 people under a mutual separation scheme which cut its workforce from 12,600 to 12,000 presently. Top Gloves counter closed 10.5 sen or 9.63% down at 98.5 sen, giving it a market capitalization of 8 billion ringgit. Kazana National and Bausted Holdings have offloaded discontinued indoor family attraction Kidzania Singapore to Singapore listed Sim Leisure Group for 110,000 Sing dollars after fulfilling the requisite conditions of the deal. Kidzania Singapore, which opened in April 2016 on Sentosa Island, Singapore, closed its doors permanently in 2020, hit hard by the COVID 19 pandemic. In a filing with the Singapore Exchange on June 12, theme park developer and operator Sim Leisure, known for its escape nature, theme parks said it had also secured an agreement with Sentosa Development Corp to lease the premises in which Kidzania Singapore is situated. Sim Leisure added that securing a lease on the premises was a requisite condition set under the conditional asset sale agreement it inked with financially distressed Rakan Riang in June 2020 for the purchase of all Kidzania Singapore's non-movable assets. Rakan Riang is 80% owned by Kazana's leisure and tourism arm, themed attractions, resorts and hotels while the remaining 20% is held by Baustad's wholly owned subsidiary, Baustad Curve. It was reported that Rakan Riang owed 53.4 million Sing dollars to more than a thousand parties, including businesses and government agencies in Singapore, 50 million Sing dollars of which were listed as claims by the Sovereign Funds Leisure Unit. Sim Leisure said the acquisition will enable the group to take over, refurbish, and revive Kidzania Singapore to operate as a Kidzania educational and entertainment concept. The move is an extension of its existing Kidzania Malaysia operations in Malaysia, where in December 2020, Sim Leisure had acquired an 80% stake in Kidzania Malaysia licensee Rakan Riang for 3.8 million ringgit from TARH. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim commented today that he will discuss with Kazana about the sale, which is said to be for a price that is too low, according to a Bernama report.
Malaysia Building Society has chosen Muhammad Rafi Muhammad Hanif to head the merged MBSB and Malaysian Industrial Development Finance entity once the 1.01 billion ringgit merger is complete. In a boss filing, MBSB said it has appointed Muhammad Rafi, who is CIMB Group Holding CEO of Group Transaction Banking, as its Group Chief Executive Officer effective July 1st. The group added that as previously announced, MBSB will be the holding company of the enlarged group upon completion of the proposed acquisition of MIDF. This confirms a report in the Edge Malaysia, which citing industry sources said the 53-year-old was set to become the group CEO of the enlarged MBSB MIDF entity. Meanwhile, with Muhammad Rafi set to take over as group CEO, MBSB said the current holder of the post, Dato' Nor Azam M. Taib, is to be realigned and focus on his responsibilities as CEO of its wholly owned MBSB bank, effective on the same date. To recap, last week, MBSB announced that it will acquire the entire equity interest in MIDF from Pomodala National for 1.01 billion via the issuance of 1.05 billion MBSB shares. Hildrick's Asia Growth Fund I's wholly owned subsidiary, HAGF Investment I, has emerged as a substantial shareholder in GIIB Holdings, whose directors are currently being investigated by the Malaysian Anti Corruption Commission. HAGF acquired 48.61 million ordinary shares or an 8.221% stake. Hildrick's Asia is a Singapore based private equity fund managed by Hildrick's Capital, which was founded in 2021 by Chu Ki Siong and Wei Teng Chuan, according to a statement. Hildrick's capital primarily focuses on direct investments in mid-sized companies with high growth prospects in Southeast Asia. Chu, who is also Hildrick's capital CEO, said that the fund is pleased to partner with GIIB, which it calls a leading Malaysian rubber product manufacturer with an established track record of close to 30 years and has extensive presence across 60 countries to support its next growth phase and expansion plans. This investment in GIIB marks Hildrick's capital's first in Malaysia. HAGF is now GIIB's second largest shareholder after Executive Director Tan Kui Sheng, who holds 11.45%. Chi Sheng's father is GIIB's Executive Chairman and CEO, Tai Bun Wee. In a statement, Chi Sheng said the group warmly welcomes Hildrick's Capital as its shareholder, which represents the first foreign institutional fund to invest in GIIB. It should be noted that on Thursday, GIIB announced that Bun Wee and two other Executive Directors have been remanded by the M. MACC on May 31st for investigation of unlawful activities. Independent power producer Edra Power Holdings is partnering with TMB Power Generation, a wholly owned subsidiary of Tanaka National, to spearhead its power generation business. In a statement today, Edra said the technical collaboration is intended for the two companies to share technical information and spare parts pooling for the operations and maintenance of the 9HA.02 gas turbine technology. According to the company, Edra and TMB Genco will work closely with the aim of improving the reliability and availability of the existing gas turbines installed at Edra Malacca Power Plant and Sultan Ibrahim Power Plant. Edra President and Executive Director Zong Yangzhu says the hope is that this partnership will lead to a stronger, greener, more efficient power supply system, contributing positively in Malaysia's decarbonisation journey to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050. He adds that by working together, it is expected to enlarge the business footprint of both companies in the fast growing power generation market.